Hi, my name is Shai Schmetzer. I'm part of the Oracle Visual Builder team. And in this demo, we're going to show you how to create service methods for business object that can work on your business object and do various operations. And you can call them either from the user interface or from other applications. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how to create a service method that would work on this department business object. As you can see, the department business object has several fields. We're interested specifically in the ID field, the department, and the max salary. Okay. So what we're going to show you is how to update a record in here if there isn't an ID that you know of, Okay. so based on another column value, and also how to insert a record if the record doesn't exist already. And we're going to base this insert and update on the department name. As you can see, the tricky part is that the update operation is based on the ID of the department. So how do you do an update, for example, if you don't have the ID of the record, if you only know the name of the department you want to update? To do that, we'll create a service method, but we won't be creating it on the department, but rather we're going to create a new object that would host this functionality for us. I'm going to call it dummy object. I'm going to define one field in here. And then I'm going to add one row into this business object. Once we add this, we have a record with the ID 1 in this business object. And that's the record that we can create and invoke operations on. So now we can go over and define a new business rule for this dummy object. Okay. We're going to use a business function or a function on our object and we're going to create a new one. Give it a name. And then we're going to use a little bit of groovy code that I pre-created before to do some operations in here. Now this function is going to receive two parameters, so let's add those parameters here. We'll have one that is called the name, the department name, and the other one we'll call it salary, and uh, the other one would also be of type long. We're also going to mark this function to be callable from external system. This means that other systems outside of VB can also invoke this business logic. This is an option for you to choose. Now let's bring in some groovy code. We'll copy it from here and paste it here. A quick review of what we're doing here. We're creating a new instance of the object called department and we're putting it in a VO um, variable. Then we're using an append view criteria which is basically adding a where clause to the business object. And you can see that we're asking whether the department is equal to our variable. Okay? Now note that there's a single quote in here at the beginning and another single quote at the end. So this is how you uh, do criteria on strings. Okay, you surround them by quotes and then we execute the query basically checking if there are any records with this department name. The first condition is basically saying if we don't have any records, okay, then we're going to create a new row for our business object. We're going to set the values of the two fields in this row, so the salary and the department, based on our variable, and then we're going to insert this into the table. If we do have rows, we're going to uh, loop over any row that has this department name, and we're going to pick up the specific row and update the salary in there with this command over here. So this is the business logic in our function. The function now exists, and now it's time to build a user interface on top of it. So to do that, we're going to start by creating a data type, and this would contain the parameter that we want to pass into this function. So we're going over here, creating a new type based on the request object for our function. Okay, and this has the two parameters in it. Now that we have the type, we can define the variable for this type. And now that we have the variable, we can go over and define the user interface. 
So back in our page, we're going to remove this title and add a couple of uh, text field over here. So maybe one text field and one numeric field over here. And we can change, of course, the title. So the first one would be the department name, and the second one would be the salary that we want to have in this department. Now we'll bind those two fields to our new variable that we created, and to each one of the attributes there, so the dname and the salary over here. Next we'll add a button, and this button would allow us to call our function. So we're going to name this button um, the update or insert, because this is what it's going to do. Let's define an event on this button. In the action chain, we're going to use the call rest endpoint and call to our new function on our dummy object. So there we go. Again, this function needs to work on a specific row, so over here we're going to use row number 1 or with the ID of 1, which we know is always in there. Put number one over here as a static value. And then we need to pass in the parameters to this function, which are passed on the body of the call that we're doing to the rest. And this is simply done by dragging over this variable that we created into the body. Like that. Alright, so now that we've done this, the next step for us is to show a table on this page. And then we'll bind this table to the same department object and we'll show the specific fields that we want like that. So the table actually shows us the data currently in the table. What we also want to do is after we update the table we want to refresh the table in the UI. So we'll take a data provider event um, and we'll invoke it on this uh, service data provider that populates the table. We'll use the refresh event, and now we're ready to run our application. So initially we're going to get a page that would show us our current list of department. We can then give the name of one of those departments, for example, let's use HR over here, and give it a new salary. So those are the two parameters to our function. We click the button, and the salary gets updated. If we now use a name of a department that doesn't exist and click the button, we'll get a new row in our table. If we use this name again and give it another salary, we'll update this row. So this is our function working from our UI. We can now also show you that the same data is not just, of course, in our UI, but also in our database. So if we'll open up our um, business object browser and go into the department and look at the data, you will see the new department with the values already there. So we actually did the update in the database as needed. As you develop the business object, you're going to write Groovy code, uh, some tips about how to help you debug and see what's going on there if something goes wrong. So I'm going to introduce actually an error here in the code, so we'll misspell the name of this column, and you'll see that there's no highlighting here of this fact because this is not a compiled language. What you want to do is you want to enable the logging for this layer, so this is the checkbox over here at the bottom right. I'll show you another technique which is to use println commands to print uh, notifications of where you are, values in your um, Groovy code, etc. So let's now run the same page. Um, we'll give it another department name and click the button. And you can see we didn't create any department. So what happened? Let's go back into Visual Builder and refresh our log. We can see the first line is our print land command printing the department name we got, which is correct. And then we can see the error that says there's no such field as department over there. So let's go over and fix this, and then go back to our application, and now um, we'll click the button again, and now we can see the new department has been created. If you go back into the log, you'll see if you click refresh, there's no more error, and we got the same value printed from our printer then. That's it.